Hello everybody, it's Mirus Tall 23 back in their video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about both modern and historical blasphemy of Jesus by those of the Jewish faith. This video is mainly addressed to those Christians out there who view the Jews as still being God's chosen righteous people, because unfortunately, there are many evangelical Christians who out there who support the nation of Israel and who seek to ally with the Jews and with the Zionists as if their faith were equally as valuable in God's eyes as our own. But this goes against a multitude of scriptures which shows us that for the most part Jews rejected Jesus and that the rabbinic Pharisaic religion of today is a corruption of righteous worship. It's not the religion of the Old Testament. Jesus said, For had ye believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me, in John chapter 5, verse 46. Now there's a term which has arisen in the last century or so, which has become much more commonly used in the modern day, and that is Judeo-Christian. Not only is this term contradictory, but it originated from a reprobate atheist philosopher, uh, and blasphemer named Frederick Nietzsche. Now, there's no such thing as Judeo-Christianity. Uh, Judeo Christianity is a continuation of the faith of the Old Testament in the God of the Bible, but Judaism is just a splinter which follows after the lies of the rabbis. It's not the religion of the Old Testament. First, before we see what the Jews have said about Jesus after the Apostolic Age, let's see what the Bible says about them. It says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 to 32, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now this is in the context of the statement by the Pharisees in verse 24, when it says, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So Jesus says that Jews can have their blasphemy forgiven if they speak against Christ, but that's different if they speak against the Holy Ghost, which we shall see in this video that they've done as well. However, even with forgiveness uh, for the blasphemy of Christ, they still need to repent and have faith in Christ in order to receive that forgiveness. This is how they receive forgiveness of sins. They are not our brothers and sisters. They are not... Uh, fellow partakers in the promise of God until they have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. As the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 43, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him should receive remission of sins. Because the Jews don't believe in him, they won't have their sins forgiven. Just because they can have their sins forgiven for blasphemy in Christ doesn't mean it will be forgiven. Now we see another example of this harsh rebuking of Jews by Jesus when he said in Matthew chapter 23, verse 13 and 35, and this is a long passage, by the way, so let me just, I'm going to read it all. It says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Whoso, whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, and sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint, and anise, and cumin. And have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye, ought ye have to done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides would strain in a gnat, and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of ex extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, and the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of uncleanness. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send you unto your prophets, 
uh, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them shall ye kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Then upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Zacharias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Now, Jesus constantly criticized the religious leaders of his day. It's not just this chapter, uh, this passage right here, but it's all throughout the New Testament. He said, woe unto them. He called them vipers. He called them blind guys. He called them hypocrites and fools, etc. Now, if this was the case, then we should understand the wickedness of Judaism. This is not something that should be surprising to Christians out there if they actually read the Bible. The rabbis, the leaders of their religion who have written the Talmud, and which teach in the synagogues, they are liars and false prophets. Jesus also said about them in John chapter 8, verse 39 to 44, They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham, but now you seek to kill me. A man that hath told you the truth, which I heard of God, this did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication, we have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and, of the, lu and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. So the Jewish rabbis, the Judaists, they're haters of God. They're children of the devil, according to Jesus. It's not just, well, they're just misled, they're just misguided. No, it's deeper than that for the religious leaders of the religion of Judaism. Judaism is a religion which has always been opposed to Christianity because of the acceptance, because of our acceptance of the true Messiah, Jesus Christ. But the Jews reject Jesus as the Christ. And the Bible says about people who do this in 1 John chapter 2, verse 22 to 23. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So they don't even have the Father. To say that Jews are God's people and that they have the blessing of God is false. Okay, They don't even have the Father. They don't even have God whatsoever. Those who have heard the Gospel, especially those who know the Tanakh and who have read it, and are continuing to reject Christ, are of the devil. They are antichrist, meaning that they are not neutral. They're not just ignorant. They are opposed to him. Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. So the Christians out there, the evangelical Christians who support Judaism, need to stop acting like the Jews are our allies. There's no such thing as Judeo-Christianity. They've always been opposed to our religion. And it's not just in the first century. It's beyond that as well. And to further show this, I'm going to give a few examples of how one of the main Jewish texts, the Talmud, which is comprised mostly of the Mishnah, which is the rabbinic commentary on the Oral Torah, blasphemes Christ. The Mishnah was written about the 3rd century CE and the oldest manuscript in existence, full manuscript in existence, dates from about 1300s, uh, the 1300s. So Jesus is mentioned m multiple times in the Talmud and each time the same lies and blasphemous statements about Jesus are made uh, that are found in the New Testament. For example, in Sanhedrin 43a it says, On Passover Eve they hung the corpse of Jesus the Nazarene after they killed him by way of stoning. And a crier went out before him for forty days, publicly proclaiming, Jesus the Nazarene is going to be stoned because he practiced sorcery, incited people to idol worship, and led the Jewish people astray. Anyone who knows of a reason to acquit him should come forward and teach it on his behalf. And the court did not find a reason to acquit him, and so they stoned him and hung his corpse on Passover Eve. So according to the Jewish rabbis, Jesus was a sorcerer. This was exactly what the Pharisees claimed in the Gospels, and Jesus said that they blasphemed the Holy Ghost. So Christ used the power of God through the Holy Ghost to do miracles, and the Jews called it sorcery and claimed him to be an idolater. Let's see what the Talmud also says in uh, Gittin 57a, verse 3 to 4. It says, Onkelos then went and raised Jesus the Nazarene from the grave through necromancy, which, by the way, is denying his resurrection. Onkelos said to him, Who is most important in the world where you are now? Jesus said to him, The Jewish people. Onkelos asked him, Should I then attach myself to them in this world? Jesus said to them, their, wel their welfare you shall seek, their misfortune you shall not seek, for anyone who touches them is regarded as if he was touching the apple of his eye. Onkelos said to him, What is the punishment of that man, a euphemism for Jesus himself in the next world? Jesus said to him, He is punished with boiling excrement. 
As the master said, anyone who mocks the words of the sages will be sentenced to boiling excrement. And this was his sin as he mocked the words of the sages. The Gemara comments, Come and see the difference between the sinners of Israel and the prophets of the nations of the world. As Balaam, who was a prophet, wished Israel harm, whereas Jesus the Nazarene, who was a Jewish sinner, sought their well-being. So how could somebody possibly read this passage in Gideon 57a and think that Judaism is okay? They're teaching that Jesus is punished in hell and boiling excrement. I, I, I mean, what kind of wicked, disgusting blasphemy is that? How can any Christian read that or hear that from the Talmud, which is one of the main Jewish works, the main Jewish text, and think that Judaism is allied with Christianity and not see that they are the enemies of Christianity? Now, first of all, does it say anything about anybody being punished in... Uh, in boiling excrement for mocking the words of the sages in the Tanakh. No, absolutely not. It's just a Jewish invention because they're prideful and they want to say, well, we're better than everybody else. We know everything. And if you criticize us, well, guess what? You're just going to go to hell and uh, this is your punishment. So that's what they believe is happening to Jesus right now. They think he's dead and he's in hell. But no, he's living and he's in heaven at the right hand of God. Now, Sanhedrin 103a verse 14 says, <clears throat> Nor shall any plague come near your tent means that you will not have a child or student who overcooks his food in public, i.e. sins in public, and causes others to sin, such as the well-known case of Jesus the Nazarene. Soda 47a, verse 14 says, For the master said, Jesus the Nazarene performed sorcery, and he excited the masses, and subverted the masses, and caused the Jewish people to sin. So their Talmud constantly calls Jesus a sorcerer, and claims that he led people astray to sin. Besides the Talmud, there's also the Toledot Yeshu, or Life of uh, Jesus, Life of Yeshua, which is an early medieval Jewish work which writes a blasphemous view of the life of Jesus, which was written in Aramaic and Hebrew, and which draws from the Talmud to present a false and hateful view of the life of Christ. And just to summarize the Toledot Yeshu, first of all, the book claims that, Jesus, that Joseph is the father of Jesus, and that Mary had committed adultery with him despite being married to a man named Yohanan which is not true at all. Uh, she was married to Joseph and him only, and uh, Jesus was born by the Holy Ghost, but they don't believe in the virgin birth. The same work also claims that uh, Jesus mocked the sages and upon learning the divine name, claimed himself as the Messiah and began to practice sorcery. It also claims that the resurrection did not happen, but that the body of Jesus was taken by a gardener to prevent his disciples from stealing the body. Now, of course, that's not only false, uh, but it's stupid. First of all, because the story originated from about the 7th century, so it's not a reliable historical source. Second, because if Jews had known the true location of the body of Jesus, they would have turned it over and put an end to Christianity quickly. But they didn't, because they didn't know where it was, because it had raised. Uh, this, is the only, uh, this is not the only uh, anti-Christian polemic written by Jews in the Middle Ages. There's also uh, one called the Book of Nestor the Priest, uh, which attacks the nature of Jesus, and there's some others as well. So, let me ask you Christians out there who are watching this video, is Judaism another friendly religion? Is it just, well, we can ally with them even though they blaspheme uh, the name of Christ? Should we support and ally ourselves with Jewish states like Israel and act as if their lies are okay? Well, absolutely not. They're blasphemers not only of Christ himself, but also of the Holy Ghost. Who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son, the Bible says. Every Jew is an Antichrist because they deny that Jesus is the Christ. Now, I had a recent guy who commented on my videos, an Antichrist, a Jew who claimed that Jesus wasn't the Messiah, and he tried to uh, provide scriptural evidence for his claims. However, half of the verses which he gave uh, were completely taken out of context and had nothing to do with the Messiah. For example, uh, he gave a verse which talks about Gog coming against the nation of Israel in Ezekiel chapter 38 which it doesn't mention the messiah it doesn't mention anything the messiah is going to do it's, it has nothing to do with anything okay but what this judaeus ignores is the fact that these mentions of bringing the kingdom into the land and uh into existence once again is not ignored by the new testament it's not well jesus didn't fulfill this therefore he's not the messiah the new testament teaches that jesus will return again and will rule eternally as a king of kings upon this earth uh it was never meant to be just an immediate fulfillment and the jews will say Oh, well, no, it, it, it was supposed to be an immediate fulfillment. There's no such thing as a second coming in the Old Testament, but that's not true either. In fact, one of the prophecies 
of uh, the Messiah found in Isaiah chapter 11 calls the Messiah the root of Jesse. In Isaiah 53, in verse 2, it says that the arm of the Lord will be raised up like a root out of the ground. So in the same chapter, and even in the context with uh, the last few verses of Isaiah 52, it calls this person's God's servant. It calls him the righteous servant. And throughout Isaiah 53, it talks about the death of God's righteous servant for the justification of sins. In verse 11, it says, By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. And then the preceding chapter, it says in Isaiah 52, verse 13 and 14, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of man. So it prophecies that God's servant, who is called both the arm of the Lord and one who raises up like a root, the root of Jesse, will face the death penalty after rejection by his people. Now the same person will have his visage marred more than any man, and in the end he will be exalted and extolled. And I think also in verse 11, or verse 10, I don't have it up with me right now, uh, so I can't quote it verbatim, but it says something like, uh, hold on, let me, actually, you know what, because this is important, I'm just going to pull it up, even if to spend some time. It says, in Isaiah chapter 53, Yet it pleased the in verse ten. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, which means he he died for an offering for a sin offering, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So even though this guy dies, even though it says uh, in verse eight that he's cut off out of the land of the living, and in verse nine that uh, he ha that he had his grave with the wicked and the rich in his death. So he died, this person, this righteous servant of God died, but it says that the Lord will prolong his days in verse 10, which is talking about the resurrection. So uh, that's exactly what happened with Jesus. He was crucified, but he rose again and he lives as the king of kings. He was exalted, even though he had his visage marred uh, more than any man. Now there's also prophecies in Psalm chapter 22 about one being pierced, and in detail uh, with verse uh, 15 and verse 15, 14 and 15, it describes what would be the hypovolemic shock of when Jesus went into on the cross about uh, his heart melting and uh, his tongue sticking to the roof of his mouth and uh, things like that. In Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, also, God identifies himself as the one being pierced. So compare this verse, Zechariah 12, 10, with Psalm 22, 16, and 17. You'll see what I'm talking about. And then there's actual verses which use the word Messiah, such as in Psalm 2, where it specifically calls God's anointed the Son of God, and it says, Blessed are they who put their trust in him. There's also Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, which prophecies that there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks until Messiah the Prince from the time when a decree is made to build up Jerusalem. Now, it just so happens that exactly 69 sets of seven years, or 483 years after the decree of Artaxerxes, Artaxerxes in 456 BCE. That's when Jesus began his ministry in 27 CE. Now, I could go on and on about the Old Testament prophecies that were f fulfilled by Jesus, which clearly reveal him to be a Messiah. But the Jews want to ignore that because he didn't, uh, because he didn't raise up Israel, because he didn't bring all the tribes into the land, because they think that that's just something he's just going to do immediately. But the Jews won't tell you any of this. The Jews won't tell you about any of these prophecies because to them. The Bible doesn't mean what it says, it means what they want it to mean, it means what they say it says. So it means that, it means what the rabbis wanted to say, because they're full of pride, when in reality they, co they couldn't interpret scripture if their life depended on it. And I'm not just saying that just to emphasize it, their life does depend on it, their eternal salvation does depend upon it, but the Pharisees of past and present, or past and present are so filled with pride and racism against the Gentiles that they entirely reject Jesus because of the fact that they only care about themselves. To them, it's all about just getting the prophets. It's all about Israel. It's all about restoring the land. It's all about restoring the kingdom and bringing the tribes back. It's all about them and God giving them what they want. Well, guess what? God's covenant with the children of Israel was conditional upon the Israelites keeping the commandments according to Exodus chapter 19, which they failed to do entirely. And God even said in uh, the book of Isaiah and in the book of Psalms, I think Psalm 51, for example, that sacrifices 
no longer mean anything to God, that they were abusing the system of sacrifices and God rejected them. And then he promised a new covenant in Jeremiah 31, where their sins will be forgiven forever and he will write their law upon their hearts. This has not happened yet according to the Jews, even though he promised that it will come soon. And this continued pride and arrogancy and hatred of the truth of Christianity has continued into the modern day. For example, the Israeli politician and member of Knesset, uh, Michael Ben-Ari, videotaped himself tearing up a copy of the New Testament and throwing it in the trash, which he said it's, it's a despic and he called it a despicable book. Because many of them create, hate Christ. Many of them hate what uh, the Word of God, hate what the Bible says. It's a religion of opposition to the true God. Uh, it's a religion of opposition to uh, what the Bible actually says. But that's not saying that they're irredeemable, that they can't be saved, okay? That's why we have missionaries, and that's why we have those who preach the word of God. It's God's command to go out and preach the gospel. So rather than ally with the Jews and act like they're their friends and act like their religion is just on the same level as ours and use terms like Judeo-Christianity, we as Christians should preach the gospel to them to get them saved, to show the truth of the claims that Jesus is the Messiah, instead of just uh, being friends with them and acting like they're okay. Now, that's not to say that there are some Jews out there who are reprobates and who absolutely hate God in their hearts and will do anything to, uh, to, harden their, to continue to harden their hearts because they just don't want to believe. There are some like that, such as the rabbis of Jesus' day, who blasphemed uh, the Holy Ghost. But the general people in the religion of Judaism, many of them are just misled. Now, this video is mostly an attack against the, the rabbis, the leaders, the uh, the Jewish apologists, etc. There are some people who are raised in Judaism who may just, because I've heard stories about people being shunned from uh, from the truths of Christianity. For example, in uh, this book right here, The Case for Christ, uh, Lee Strobel interviewed, uh, I think his name is, I don't know his first name, but his last name is Lapides or something like that. And he interviewed him, and Lapides was giving his life story and about how his parents were basically giving him false perceptions of what Christianity is and he even in his uh, teenage years thought that Christianity was some kind of neo-nazi religion or something like that and he didn't really understand anything about it because his parents were shunning him and that happens in Judaism all the time some people just don't understand what Christianity is they don't under they never see the prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus. They never see what the New Testament teaches about Jesus. They just think it's, well, we're just going to hate the Jews, and that's all what Christianity is about. But it's not about hating Jews. It's not about hating at all. We don't hate Jews. We hate Judaism, the religion, because it's against God. We love we love the Jews. And, and by the way, when we say Jews, we're talking about, uh, well, I'm talking about the religion in particular, not like the ethnic group. I think people put too much emphasis on the ethnic group instead of the religion. Because obviously somebody who isn't part of the Jewish religion doesn't matter in this video because I'm talking about the Talmud and the teachings of the Jews against Christ. Of course, people who don't even believe in the Old Testament, which I don't think Jews do anyway, uh, but people who completely reject the New Testament and don't practice Judaism at all, of course they don't, they don't really care if Jesus is the Messiah or not because they don't believe in the Messiah. So this video is against the Jewish religion. It's not to personally attack any Jews in particular, but the point to Christians out there is that there are enemies and that they are not our friends. They are against us, they are against Christ, and instead of allying with them, we should preach them the gospel. So, thank you, buddy, for watching, and goodbye.